So I love secrets and hidden details in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and interestingly, some of the best are contained in the very buildings that we spend so much of our time in. From the shops such as Nook's Cranny and the Abel Sisters, to the public buildings like Resident Services and the Museum, they all offer a ton of secrets and hidden details that you might have missed over the years. So I've decided to make a compilation of my past videos throughout the years specifically focused on these establishments. Please keep in mind some of these videos are pre 2.0 updates, so you may notice some small changes. But either way, I hope you enjoy and be sure to leave a like on the video if you're excited to learn some secrets. Number 1. The fossil exhibit's entrance room is actually full of neat little artifacts that you didn't donate yourself. These four specimens at the front can't actually be donated to the museum at all. They just start to appear as you donate some of the smaller fossils that you've dug up outside. I think these are all really cool and it's a little mysterious how they just pop up like this. Could someone else have donated them without us knowing? Perhaps one of our villagers went on a little hunt for goodies to donate and found these, then gave them to Blavers. Either way, it helps fill out this room which would be fairly empty without these extra contributions, and they all look pretty cool, so it's definitely a nice little thing to see. Number 2. Something that is fairly sadistic is that you can actually see the meteor that killed all of the dinosaurs if you stand on this specific spot in the dinosaur exhibit. It's of course not something you donate, but one of the special features this museum offers with a really cool unique camera angle so you can get a full look at their impending doom. The fact that Blavers likely set this all up will give you an insight into his sense of humour, given he'd have to have taken so much time and effort to hang this heavy object above all of the unsuspecting dinosaurs. There's also a mini exhibit in this area showing off the event happening, which makes things all the more bleaker when you suddenly realise that you're surrounded by the bones of dead creatures. Number 3. The museum actually has a secret roped off door in the exhibit with all the animal silhouettes. This door was likely just placed here to add some nice little scenery to an otherwise empty spot. Number 4. Let's talk art. For many, the art exhibit is likely quite bare as Red certainly isn't the easiest guy to get a hold of, but when you can donate some art, there are some really cool secret details that you might not have known about. If you donate a warrior statue to the museum, you'll find he's actually joined by his army. You can't actually donate the little ones, but they're super cool and it's a nice little extra touch that only appears in the game once you've donated this item, meaning that many players who haven't donated this piece of art yet most likely won't have seen this cool little addition that happens when you donate it to Blavers. I really like this statue and especially love the addition that happens upon donating it. I just wanted to interrupt myself briefly to let you know that I now have a Patreon. If you want to support my channel and the content I make here, it's one of the best ways to do so. You can get a ton of perks such as early access to my content, exclusive videos, channel updates, Discord access, and much more. The link is down in the description if you want to learn more details. Number 5. You can actually catch your beetles having a bit of a fight with another beetle on the large tree where all of these massive bugs reside. It's a cool little animation that kind of rewards you for catching these guys, since some of the beetles in New Horizons can be so hard to find. You'll be able to catch the loser of the fight actually flying away, and it won't return until you re-enter the room. It seems to be random each time which bugs will be paired up to fight, but the loser always seems to fly away and can fly back potentially once you've re-entered the room. I found lots of cool combinations and I highly recommend you guys go check these out for yourself so you can see which beetles are up against each other and ultimately who comes out on top. Number 6. Take a look at this little pond exhibit which hosts bugs you've donated like the pond skater and the diving beetle. What's really interesting is that fish actually show up here to give this section a more lively and natural feeling. These aren't actually fish you've donated, just ones put in the game itself to make this area feel more alive. It definitely works for me and it's such a peaceful little place. It'd certainly be a lot of fun to see what creatures you can actually spot amongst the reeds here. You might find yourself in for a little surprise. You can also catch these really nice koi fish in this area with dragonflies and lily pads. Overall, they've made this such a beautiful place to be and I really, really love this part of the museum in particular. Big kudos to whoever designed it. Number 7. Of course, I'm going to talk about what I featured in the thumbnail, which is Nat, who makes a little cameo appearance in the lab room of the bug exhibit. His little portrait can be seen on this chart, likely explaining that he's an expert on bugs. An interesting note about the art you see here is that it's actually his amiibo card art. This means that they sadly did not create a new render of artwork for Nat, which they have done for many other characters, but instead chose to use some of the older art. Number 8. 
Hilariously, the lab actually has a little fly swatter right behind where you can find your flies. It seems very likely this is a little nod to the fact that Blavers absolutely hates bugs and would likely do whatever necessary to get rid of them, so definitely don't put it past him to try and swat these if they ever escape from that tank. Though this little lab is full of intriguing details, this is definitely the best one for me. Number 9. If you move your camera angle just the right way, you can actually spot a bug that's off screen here in this part of the lab. It's unknown if this bug is actually supposed to be there or whether it's just an asset left over, but it's certainly intriguing, perhaps one of the absolute best secrets that the museum has to offer. What do you guys think about this hidden creature, and why do you think it's in such an obscure spot? Number 10. This ant exhibit actually hosts tons of really tiny, hard to see ants. Much easier to see are the larger ants who are off in their little bubble, likely plotting something straight out of the ants movie. All of these little ants can be found moving in interesting and unique ways, so I recommend taking a look at what they get up to. Number 11. Like any safe museum, this one is actually full of fire exhibits. They of course don't actually lead anywhere, so if there is a fire in the museum, unfortunately it seems like you're stuck. However, it's pretty cool for them to add a realistic little touch like this across the museum, making it feel closer to a real life museum that you could actually visit. Hopefully we won't experience a fire anytime soon in Animal Crossing. Number 12. This little poster you can see here is actually showing off a horseshoe crab, which is a creature that you'll have to dive for in order to find. It was added in with the diving update in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and this cute little poster is just showing it off and showing off its stinger at the end of its tail. I really like these little posters and you can actually find quite a few of these scattered around the museum, so I highly recommend taking a look out for any that you can find. Number 13. If you donate a piranha to the museum and go to visit it in its tank, you'll find that it actually tries to go for you. This little fella isn't messing around and will go right up to the glass in an attempt to bite you. Thankfully, it's stuck in this tank so you can live another day knowing that your skin is safe, at least until this thing becomes sentient and learns how to grow legs and catch you outside of the water where you really won't be safe. Thankfully, this seems unlikely for the time being. Number 14. If you stand in this particular spot in the Deep Sea Creatures exhibit, you'll get a new camera angle as the game is encouraging you to take a photo op with this diver and the submarine. You can see this by the little sign indicating a camera and the Nook Phone too, so if you're looking for some nice photos in the museum, this could be a really cool place to do that. Number 15. Looking behind this exhibit, you can actually see the surrounding area is some kind of really nice peaceful forest. However, since this doesn't line up at all with where the museum actually is on my island, it seems likely that this is just some kind of screen designed to make the room look prettier. The main room of the museum also has some leaves falling outside the glass windows, but of course this doesn't really work for many islands who have their museums placed in really odd locations. Either way, it looks super pretty and you don't really get to see this backdrop too often because of how the camera is angled by default. Number 1. Sable's Patterns whether you come into the Able Sisters building on the same day, the same hour, or even the same 30 seconds, Sable will be sewing a different pattern each and every time. I decided to test this out and there's so many different patterns which you can catch her sewing, which I think is a really nice attention to detail, because of course she's not going to be working on literally the same pattern all day. It's always been really sad to me that Sable has actually been stuck in the building and never really gets a chance to leave, so I'm at least happy that she's not stuck doing the same thing. When you visit, definitely take a look and check in on her to see what patterns she's currently sewing. You'll find that there's a lot of different ones that you can see. Number 2. The Flower Motif now really interestingly, there's actually a flower motif all over the Able Sisters building. You may not have noticed this before, but there are a ton around the entire place. For example, you can see it on the wallpaper, it's plastered all on the wallpaper. You can also see some flowers on the door to their little living quarters. And you can also see a little book about flowers behind Sable as well. Clearly the sisters really have a love for this particular type of flower which I think is really nice and it just helps make the building look very cute. So it's just a nice little detail that I really enjoy. Number 3. Labels Items When you talk to Label and you do her little fashion check which is a really fun little mini game that I honestly feel is super underrated in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you'll be able to unlock new items from her and some of them are really cool looking. 
Now, interestingly enough, when you unlock new items from her, they'll actually start to appear in the Able Sisters building and you'll be able to purchase them from there anytime you like, which is really great as it'll allow you to get lots of different color variations of the item as well. So basically, this is a neat way to kind of expand the Able Sisters inventory so you're not just seeing the same items every single time. I really miss the fact that Label no longer has her own section of the store. If you guys didn't know and Animal Crossing New Horizons is your first game, back in Animal Crossing New Leaf, Label actually had her own little section of the store where she would sell accessories. That's definitely missed, I know they wanted to consolidate everything into the main building, but I wish she had her own little section again. You could actually build up her friendship in that game and you can kind of do it in Animal Crossing New Horizons 2 which is a nice little throwback. Number 4, The Living Quarters This is a really nice little detail that I feel like a lot of people probably haven't noticed, but there's actually a door beside Sable which leads to their own little living quarters. Now sadly, we as players can't actually go there, of course, you've not been missing out on some hidden room that you didn't know about this entire time, but it is neat that they've got their own little space which they can enjoy. I've always wondered where the animals used to go back in previous games when their stores closed, because there really was nowhere that they actually seemed to live. They didn't have houses on your island or anything like that, so surely they'd have to live in the stores, but there really wasn't much of an indication that they had their own private little space. So I'm happy they've added this in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I think it'd be great if we got an update sometime in the future where we actually could visit where they live. It kind of reminds me in Stardew Valley where some of the little living quarters of the shopkeepers are blocked off until you increase their friendship. I think that'd be a really great idea for Animal Crossing New Horizons. They should definitely do that in the future and maybe we could get a better insight to how these characters actually live. I know I'd love that. Number 5, The Family Photos. Behind Sable at all times and in basically all versions of the Able Sisters in Animal Crossing are a bunch of different family photos. These actually tell a bit of a sad story because when the Able Sisters were young, their parents tragically died and ever since Sable has been looking after both of her younger sisters. Still, it's cute that they've decided to honor their parents and their family history by keeping the photos up for everyone to see. I feel like a lot of people don't really take the time to actually look at these photos, but they do share some really nice memories, and they also give a good indication of the age gap between the Able Sisters as well, which I'm going to talk more about later on in this video. The Able Sisters honestly have the most complex and interesting history out of all of the Animal Crossing characters in my opinion, and I think that's what makes them so great and so popular amongst Animal Crossing fans. Fans. Even more so if you've been playing the games for a long time and you've gone back to visit some of the old games. I definitely recommend doing that at some point. The old games will give you a bigger insight into the history of the Able Sisters and honestly it is pretty sad. Number 6, The Patterns. Now you probably know that if you become good friends with Sable you can actually unlock some pretty cool patterns which you can use to customize different items and even your phone case too which is pretty cool. You'll have to unlock these day by day by continually talking to her so it's a nice little activity to do each and every day. But what you might not have known is that as you unlock more of these patterns from Sable you're actually going to unlock these for your villagers as well. And as time goes by, you'll see your villagers using these as phone cases. This is something that I only learned recently, and I think it's super cool that your villagers can actually kind of change their phone cases as well. It's almost like as you unlock more patterns, your villagers get a cool little upgrade as well. So it's nice to see that we're not the only ones who use these patterns around the island. Your villagers can actually enjoy them too. Keep an eye out for your villagers' phone cases as sometimes you'll see them snapping little photos around the island. Number 7, Nook Scissors? In previous Animal Crossing games, it was kind of hinted at that Sable and Tom Nook actually had some kind of romantic connection when they were younger, and that Tom Nook decided to pursue his dreams by going to the city, while Sable kind of stayed behind. However, Tom Nook has always been a bit of a softie and actually gave Sable a really cute gift for her birthday, which was a pair of scissors. Now, interestingly enough, there is a pair of scissors behind Sable at all times in the Able Sisters store. A lot of people don't seem to think these are actually the scissors that Tom Nook gave, but I think even if they aren't the exact ones, they're definitely a reference to that from previous Animal Crossing games. They're too openly placed. It's like Nintendo really wants us to notice them. I can't believe it's just a coincidence. I think it's a nice little nod back to the previous games. It's also really interesting to think of Tom Nook actually having a romantic connection with anyone in the Animal Crossing games, because he really doesn't seem like the type, but still, it's a nice little piece of lore. 
Number 8. Label to Label If you didn't know, in previous Animal Crossing games, Label used to be called Label and she was actually estranged from her sisters. Eventually they reconnected again, but she used to go by the name Labelle because she worked for Gracie who was basically her fashion mentor. This is a really cool little detail that when Label has kind of come into her own in this game, she's actually changed her name to go back to her original name rather than her sort of fashion designer name which used to be Labelle. In my videos, I often end up calling her Labelle still because I'm so used to that name and a lot of people correct me on that so I wanted to kind of mention that she did actually used to have a different name, she's not always been called Label. Number 9, The Till. It doesn't matter where you look in the Able Sisters store, you will not see a till. Now this might not seem strange to you because you interact with the items if you want to buy them or you go in the changing room which is definitely really convenient and this is actually something that you did in the previous games as well. But in the previous versions of the Able Sisters store, they actually did have their own little till, which is something that you can see in other buildings, for example Nook's Cranny in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So I just found it really interesting that they didn't have their own little till. I know it wouldn't actually be functional in the game, but Nintendo likes to add these as a little detail to make the store feel more alive. So I just found it really interesting that they've kind of moved more away from that in this particular version of the Able Sisters. The Sisters. So a lot of people are probably wondering what the age difference between the Able Sisters is. They all look pretty similar in age, but of course they have their own unique designs as well, so it can be kind of hard to tell where they place. Well, it turns out that Sable is actually the oldest sister, and like I mentioned earlier, she's basically been looking after her younger sisters her entire life, which is quite admirable. Then there's Label, which is actually the middle sister. I guess she didn't feel as close to her sisters in the past, so she decided to try and move on with her life and do her own thing, but eventually they all reconnected and they're super close once again, which is really nice. Now, you probably noticed this, but Mabel is actually the youngest sister and she's the most outgoing of the three. She's definitely a bit more immature than her sister Sable and you'll notice this when they interact sometimes, but I honestly love all three of these characters equally, they've got such great stories and I think they make the Animal Crossing series just that much more lovable. Number 1 When you start up the game, you'll be given a nice little tent and some items to help you settle into the island, such as a camping cot, a radio and a lantern too. These items are really cool, but as you progress in the game, you may find yourself not needing them anymore, which means you may decide to sell them to Timmy or Tommy at Nook's Cranny. If you do, you'll actually get a special piece of dialogue where Timmy or Tommy will say, Wait, are they selling? In shock that you would sell some of the items they actually gave you themselves. I guess it's just the nostalgia in them of them not wanting you to get rid of these items, but it is true that as you progress throughout the game, you probably won't need them anymore and you wouldn't really want to use them in a fully decorated house. I just thought this was really funny and honestly kind of cute at the same time, and it's cool that Nintendo even thought to include something like this when they could have easily gotten away with not doing it at all. So I do really like this hidden detail. Number 2. Now, it turns out that Timmy and Tommy actually do sleep. These guys may seem like they're awake all the time and just available whenever you need them, like Isabel and Tom Nook, but that's not actually the case, because both of them actually have their own little sleeping quarters within the building. Now you can't actually access them yourselves, but as you can see in the upgraded Nook's Cranny, there is a little staircase right behind the till which you can visit and basically take a look at. Sadly, you can't actually go up there like I mentioned, it is completely inaccessible, but who knows, maybe one day Nintendo will allow us to see where the special characters actually live, because we've never really gotten a glimpse of that in an Animal Crossing game before. It's also visible in the original Nook's Cranny as well, you can see it in the left corner, and again we don't really get a proper glimpse at what it is. In this one it looks like it's on the ground floor, but on the other one it looks like it's on the second or in some kind of attic. So I just thought that was really neat that Nintendo decided to include some kind of sleeping quarters for these two because they definitely do work really hard and deserve the rest. Number 3 Here's something that's really interesting and a little bit of a scam on Nook's Cranny's part. Now of course you can buy regular tools from here as well as flimsy tools but you can also buy these interesting tools which seem kind of fancy like for example the outdoorsy shovel and this little slingshot here which is pretty cool as well, the outdoorsy slingshot. And that's just a few of them, there's a bunch of them that you've probably seen. They all have different colour variations. But what I wanted to mention here is that the regular slingshot which costs 900 bells 
and the outdoorsy slingshot, which costs 2,500, have the same durability. That means they will break with the same amount of uses. So you're paying that extra amount of bells basically just to get a different aesthetic. Now, don't get me wrong, some of these aesthetics are cool and you can get a bunch of different looks and colors for them. For example, the duck fishing rod, I think is adorable. But if you don't have a ton of bells to spend, you definitely will just want to get the regular version and not spend more bells on the different version because you're basically just getting the same thing. Number four. It turns out that on certain occasions, if you manage to get your hands on a special golden recipe, Timmy and Tommy will actually make a special comment if you try and sell it to them. So, for example, I'm trying to sell the recipe for a golden net here, but Timmy and Tommy are warning me that I probably shouldn't do this because it's such a special and valuable recipe that I might not be able to get again. After all, the majority of people aren't going to want to trade these recipes with you, like with other recipes, so if you sell them, it might be your last chance to actually get that item. So it's something they definitely recommend not doing, and I also recommend not doing it as well. Definitely don't get rid of those golden recipes unless somehow you have a duplicate, and if somehow you do have a duplicate, it's probably best just to give it to someone else. Again, I really like that they put this little dialogue in for these two, I think that was very cool, and it's something that a lot of people won't probably notice, because let's be honest, who is going to go out there and try and sell the golden recipes? It just doesn't really add up. Number 5. It turns out that Timmy and Tommy actually have their very own cute little tips jar, which sadly is empty most of the time. It's also visible in the original Nook's Cranny as well, the very first version of the building that you can get on your island, and it's this blue little thing which you can put some tips in if you'd like to, in an ideal world. Sadly, in the Animal Crossing world, you actually can't tip them at all. It's physically not possible to give them anything, so this really is just a little decoration. But I thought it was very cute, and it's something that I reckon that most people don't even notice the majority of the time, because it's just so small, and it just kind of blends into the background of the little place. But there is so much detail in this little building, like with most of the buildings in this game. So I always love pointing out the really tiny things that I feel like a lot of other people just wouldn't notice. Number six. So the Nook's Cranny facade will actually change with the different seasons in the game. There are a whole bunch of different looks that you can get from it, as you can see on screen, one for each of the seasons, which is definitely really cool. The spring one very nicely invokes spring with the little watering can with the flowers in it, which I really love. You've got the summer one, which is just perfect for the warm months of the year. You have the one for autumn and kind of the Halloween-y type time with the nice leaves and the pumpkins, which is really great. You've also got one for winter too, with a cute little snowman that I definitely hope Timmy and Tommy built, which is something that I would absolutely love to see them doing. I just think it's great that this building gets updated for different times of the year, and I believe some of these things actually change depending on what event is going on in the game, which is another little detail about Nook's Cranny I'm going to talk about soon. It's just so cute to me that the building changes and kind of updates as your island does as well. It's a shame that Nook's Cranny doesn't have more upgrades, but if eventually the building does get bigger and expands, I definitely hope they keep this where it changes throughout the different seasons, because it is one of the cutest little details that they've added to the game, and it's just something that I really like. Number 7. So, Timmy and Tommy will actually kick you out of Nook's Cranny, something that I think quite a few people know about, but I just wanted to mention here because it is such a fun little easter egg. If you stay past the closing time, closing time of the building, they will actually kick you out, which is really funny to me, and you just won't be able to get back in. The Able Sisters actually won't do this to you, so it's just Timmy and Tommy who don't want you exploring their building past their bedtime. Number 8. Timmy and Tommy will actually wear cute little outfits for some of the different events that are happening in the game. For example, these cute little hats that they wear during Halloween. They'll also wear Santa hats and stuff for Festival as well, which is honestly just adorable. I really love the fact that they gave them little costumes. I think the Halloween ones are the absolute cutest. And it's just nice that they kind of take part in the celebrations of the events, something that they didn't really do in previous Animal Crossing games. So that's something that I think has helped develop their characters even more and just shown off how cute they are. If you weren't a fan of these guys before, then just look at them in their cute little hats because it's made me a massive fan of them. At the start of the game, you'll notice that Tommy is carrying a cute little flag around the island. 
Well, it turns out that later on, his flag gets left in resident services when it upgrades, and you'll basically never see him with it again, which is really sad. You can even get this flag as an item to hold for yourself, but Tommy no longer is able to hold it because he doesn't walk around your island, he's kind of stuck in Nook's Cranny. This is definitely sad to me, I just remember the dynamic of the original Resident Services tent where we had Timmy and Tommy and then of course Tom Nook as well. That was really cute and I do kind of miss those days and seeing Tommy carrying the flag around the island. Hopefully he can get it back at some point, that would be really cute. Number 3 when a villager decides to move out of your island, it's always a sad thing, but there is actually a little benefit you can enjoy within resident services. Sometimes the villagers will actually leave behind the items that you gave them, whether this be clothing items or furniture, and you can actually find them in the drop box. I thought this was a really cool detail and it's one that I didn't actually know myself before making this video, so yes, yeah, sometimes some of the items that you've given to your villagers can end up here once they move out, which is pretty cool. Maybe you gave your villagers a really nice item by mistake and you just want it back. Who knows, you might get lucky enough to see it in here. So definitely make sure to check out the drop box. I found some surprising stuff in here that I had no idea would end up in there. So it's always worth having a look through it just in case you find something interesting. Number four. Tom Nook is absolutely obsessed with golfing and this can be seen throughout both of the resident services. And you can also see more evidence of his love of golfing when the resident services is actually a tent. This is something that started in Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, and they've decided to run with it for some reason. I honestly don't know why Tom Nook loves golfing so much, but he does kind of give me dad golfing vibes, so you know what, it's quite a good fit for him. Number 5. Sometimes you can actually catch Isabel sleeping on the job, which is adorable and she definitely deserves it because she's just working super hard all of the time and she never really gets to leave the resident services building. Now, if you sit down on the chair, you'll actually surprise her and wake her up. I don't know how she knows that you've sat down, but somehow she has supersonic hearing and she just knows when you sit down and she has to do some more work. So yes, if you catch her sleeping, if you want to leave her alone, don't sit down in the chair because she will basically get super surprised and wake up immediately. Still, I really like this interaction. I love all the different things that Tom, Nick and Isabel do around the building when we decide to visit. Number six. Although Tom Nook has an obsession with golfing, he also is a really big fan of K.K. Slider. This can be evidenced by the fact you can see him reading K.K. Slider's magazines in his off time, and he also talks about K.K. Slider coming to the island as well. Of course, everyone around the island is a huge fan of K.K. Slider. He's basically the only musician in the Animal Crossing world, so it just makes sense. And of course, K.K. Slider is super cool too, can't deny that. But it's just really interesting to me that Tom Nook is such a big fan, because usually in past games, he's seemed like such a passive character when it comes to stuff like hobbies, he's always seemed more business focused. So I'm really glad that in these newer Animal Crossing games, they've developed Tom Nook a bit more. Even though some characters have lost a bit of their depth, I like these little details that they've added to characters like Tom Nook. I think it's a good way forward and I'd like them to do it more. Number 7. So of course you'll know that Isabel has a nice little flower that she'll sometimes attend to within the resident services building. But this flower is really interesting because it'll actually change each season. There's one for winter, spring, summer, and fall as well, which is really cool. So it's nice to see little changes happen with each season throughout the game. Of course, the game will change drastically outdoors, but it's nice to see some happen indoors as well with resident services. I don't know if Isabel is literally killing off the flower each time or she's just replacing them. Maybe Isabel is not the best plant mum out there, but she's definitely doing her best and we'd love to see Isabel with these cute flowers. Number 8. Now of course you'll probably know that Tom Nook and Isabel will change their outfits depending on which part of the year it is. If it's in the summertime they'll have these nice cute floral shirts on and if it's in the winter time they'll start to dress up a bit warmer. However Tom Nook and Isabel will also dress up for special occasions around the island as well, wearing cute little hats for Halloween and even Toy Day as well. I really like this little detail and you can see other characters dressing up like this as well which I mentioned in my Nook's Cranny Secrets video. It's just really cute to see Isabel and Tom Nook take part in the festivities even though they are stuck in the resident services building most of the time. They honestly deserve to do more and it makes me so sad that they just have to work 24-7. Let them have more fun Nintendo, let them have a day off for once. Honestly, my villagers are always trying to guilt trip me for not spending time on the island. 
Hey Bob's gang, wandering around aimlessly like I usually do, it got me thinking there's a lot of things that we never ever get to see in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Although this game is basically our own canvas and we can do whatever we want with this world, Nintendo has put some things off limits. They've said no, keep away. Let me give you an example. Here on Harvey's Island we have all of these really great shops. These are amazing, I love this and I was so happy when they did this update. But have you ever considered that we literally never ever get to see the insides of any of these campers? In Animal Crossing we're really used to going inside of the buildings, the museum, Nook's Cranny, the Able Sisters, but these ones are completely off limits. Back in Animal Crossing City Folk where you had a whole bunch of random shops, you could go inside pretty much all of them. But here in New Horizons we don't get to see what the inside of these campers look like. I'm willing to bet we wouldn't get to see inside of Reds anyways, it's technically a crime scene. I think it would have been really cool to see what each of these characters actually live like. I mean, is it their own residential home in here? Or is it just more of their shop? Is this where they keep their inventory? I really need to know. This makes me even sadder when you consider that back in Animal Crossing New Leaf, you could go inside of the RVs in Harvey's little campsite. So I kind of wish Nintendo would have let us do this here. Maybe at night time when everyone closes up, you could go inside and see what they actually live like. This would have definitely given the characters more personality, which is something I feel like a lot of us can agree New Horizons needed more of. Speaking of Harvey's Island, another thing that you'll never see is actually a villager on Harv's. Now, I'm not talking about the inside of the building. You can invite villagers here with their amiibo and such and set up all kinds of scenes. We're talking about the shopping area. Now realistically, villagers would have good cause to shop here just like they do in the shops on our own islands, but we never get to see them on half for some reason. I guess we're just that exclusive that we get to shop in one place that no one else does. I honestly don't know how these shops are staying in business though because I haven't bought anything here in like six months now. Speaking of villages in places, you also don't ever get to see villages inside of the airport. I also believe it's pretty rare for you to see special characters in here. Maybe you see Tom Nook and Lottie in here at the start of Happy and Paradise. I don't know, my memory's kind of foggy. But as far as I can remember, you never see a villager inside of the airport. I guess they don't travel, which is really sad. They don't have any horizons to look forward to, uh, no pun intended. I think it could have been really cute if maybe a villager was here with all their suitcases on the day they were moving out or something. That would have been absolutely adorable, but you know what, actually maybe that would have broken our hearts a bit too much, so maybe they shouldn't have done that. You have also never seen the inside of this airport control tower. Now I believe some people in the past have actually used glitches and tools and such to get themselves in these off-limits areas, but they're basically just undefined messes, there's nothing really going on there. But in the world of Animal Crossing, of course, this area would play an important part. There's lots of airplanes coming in and out, you know, when you're going to different places or inviting friends over, yet we never get to see this important place. I do get why, but maybe it would have been cool to have a place where we actually get to see Wilbur hang out. After all, we only get to see him when we go on a trip. We're stuck with Orville most of the time. On a little side note, I'm still kind of mad that my airport is stuck as yellow, honestly. I really wish it wasn't. So, talking about the airport control tower that we don't get to see the inside of, it's made me think about all the other areas that are off limits. There's actually a lot of places that our eyes never get to see in Animal Crossing New Horizons. One of these is the back room in Resident Services. Who knows what goes on in here? I have literally no idea, but clearly some important work must happen given that we're not allowed inside. This could of course just be a living quarter for Tom Nook and Isabel, but it's kind of hard to imagine them living in this building, unlike some of the others that we have on the island. I don't know though, knowing Isabel, she probably would sleep where she works, I mean she literally is in this clip that I'm recording right now, so I guess that's proof that maybe she does live in the resident services building. Timmy and Tommy also have their own back room in Nook's Cranny, and they have a little ladder. Now, for a long time, people thought that this was a hint towards the next Nook's Cranny upgrade, an unfinished area that would lead upstairs to the second floor renovation, but nope, it basically just is Timmy and Tommy's living quarters. I think this would have made the perfect second floor for Nook's Cranny, but sadly that is an upgrade that we never got. So you never have and basically never will see the upstairs of Nook's Cranny. Especially because, you know, Nintendo never really actually modelled anything up there. Just like in Nook's Cranny though, the Able Sisters have their own mysterious door which leads to another room. 
Once again, fairly safe to assume that this is their living quarters, a space that sadly we'll never get to peek our eyes into. Given how hard the Able sisters work, especially Sable, it would have been nice to see them actually relax somewhere. I'm really, really hoping in the next Animal Crossing game that we'll get a little insight into the personal lives of these characters. We do get so much lore for the Able sisters, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic, but I feel like there's always more to be learned. After all, when Nintendo gives you some really good tidbits about these characters, you definitely want to know more. One that is much more recent than the others I listed is actually Bruce's stockroom, and finally we do actually get to see inside of this, it has been at least partially modelled. Bruce's stockroom is of course full of all the supplies that he would need for coffee and such, but also it is full of gyroids, which he absolutely loves. So technically, is this something that you do get to see in Animal Crossing New Horizons? Well, yes, but still, we don't get a proper look inside this room and we can't actually enter it for ourselves, sadly. I think a lot of people are hoping that maybe we could work in the roost and then we'd be able to go in here maybe to get some resources and such. That would have been great and I don't know why Nintendo missed up on that opportunity. Still, at least our eyes get to feast on more of this back room than the other ones on this list. Okay, I'm done with the back rooms, but the roost has reminded me of something. You will never get to see Don Resetti and Resetti on your island outside of the roost. Technically, these characters have been in the game since the very start. You've been able to call them up with the helicopter service. This is where they work, but we don't ever get to see where they work. Thankfully, they do pop into the roost sometimes for a visit, and of course, you could amiibo them into Happy Home Paradise, but you won't ever get to see them on your island despite them having been there since the start. To be honest, I've been avoiding Resetti after all the trauma he gave me as a child, so I'm not complaining too much about this one. Honestly, there are a lot of other things that we never get to see in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So, what are some things that you can think of that sadly we never get to see but you wish we could? What would improve the game? So, I hope you enjoyed checking out those secrets and hidden details about the buildings in New Horizons. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment Bob's Gang so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications for more.